Congratulations on your Cedar Summit playset. Your children will thank you as they stretch their imaginations in the fort, on the rock wall, or swinging on their very own playset. In just two days time, you'll provide your kids with years of adventure and healthy fun. We'll take you through all the steps so your build goes smoothly and your family can enjoy time together. Start the build and get ready to watch your kids soar. Preparation. Your Cedar Summit playset is one of the easiest playset assemblies around, but you need to understand the process before you begin. Read your manual and watch this video first. The manual goes into detail and will help you prevent avoidable mistakes, so please take the time to familiarize yourself with it. The project will take at least two people and two days to build. More hands will move the work along even quicker. Be sure to fill out your box codes and tracking number on your stop sheet. You will need these numbers should you call in to customer support. Site Location Your finished playset will need a 27 foot 9 inch by 30 foot obstacle free zone to accommodate swinging, slide landing space and running area. Do not install your playset on hard surfaces such as concrete or asphalt. We recommend using a soft surface for the system such as wood chips, sand or wood fibers. Please check your manual under protective surfacing guidelines on page 3 for further tips and recommendations. Parts Identification Now that you're ready to build, lay out all the supplied parts and check them against the lists in the manual. Sorting wood parts into each assembly step will save time. To help you with this, all wood parts are labeled with a key number. Wood parts are found in box 2, 3, 4 and 5. Open each box with wood parts and look for the key number stamped on the end of the wood part. The first two digits of the key number refer to the step number. The third digit represents the piece. If a piece is used in more than one step, the number only reflects the first step it is used in. The majority of each hardware part comes packed in a separate bag so you do not need to sort the hardware. Each assembly step indicates which hardware, bolt, screw, washer, etc. you will require to complete the step. If you are missing a piece, please contact our customer service department immediately. The number is on the front of the manual. Do not contact the retailer as they will not have replacement parts. Tools Before you begin, save some time and make sure you have the following tools. Tape measure, carpenter's level, carpenter's square, claw hammer, standard or cordless drill, number one Phillips, number two Robertson screwed drivers and bits, ratchet with extension, one half inch and nine sixteenth inch sockets, open end wrench, seven sixteenth inch, one half inch and nine sixteenth inch, an adjustable wrench, one eighth inch and three sixteenth inch drill bits, a pencil, a three sixteenth inch hex key, safety glasses, an eight foot step ladder and adult assistance. Step one. Picnic Table Assembly Loosely attach one 011 support table and one 012 support seat to two 010 CE table legs using two G8 hex bolts with lock washer, flat washer and T-nut per board. Make sure the support table is level and flush with the top of each of the CE table legs and the angled edges of the support table and support seat are facing down. The distance between the support table and the support seat must measure a minimum of 9 inches. Secure with two S15 wood screws per board and tighten the bolts. Repeat step A to create two table end assemblies. With assistance from another adult, attach the 013 table rail to each 012 support seat using four S4 wood screws. Attach one 014 seat to each side of the table assembly on each support seat using four S15 wood screws per seat. The outside edges of both seats should be flush to the top edges of the support seats. Place three 015 tabletops across both support tables, making sure the outside boards are flush to the outside edges of the support tables. On one end of the table assembly, the tabletops should overhang the edge of the support table by 3 and 5 eighths inches. 
the tic-tac-toe assembly will be attached to this side later in this step. Now attach the tabletops to each support table using four S15 wood screws per board. Make sure to evenly space the center tabletop. With help, turn the table assembly upside down. On the inside of each support table and flat against the middle tabletop, attach one 016 picnic gusset to each support table using two S4 wood screws per gusset. Attach both picnic gussets to the middle tabletop with one S20 wood screw and one S3 wood screw per gusset. On the end of the table assembly that overhangs the support table, measure three inches from the edge of one of the outside tabletops, then place one tube mount at the marked out spot with the arrows facing out. The tube mount should be flush to the ends of the tabletops, and the center of the tube mount should align with the center screws in the support table. Attach the tube mount to each of the tabletops with three S10 pan screws. Do not over tighten the screws. Feed three tic tac toe drums onto one tic tac toe post. Repeat to have three completed posts. Place the other tube mount on the 017 TTT bottom. The center should be nine inches from one side and make sure the arrows are facing out and it is flush to the front edge of the TTT bottom. Then attach it with three S10 pan screws. Do not over tighten the screws. Now place each tic-tac-toe post into the tube mount. On a flat level surface, place the TTT bottom with tube mount over top of the tic-tac-toe assembly. Then attach the TTT bottom to the support seat with four S4 wood screws, two from the outside and two from the inside. Make sure the tic-tac-toe posts are secure and tight in each tube mount. The tic-tac-toe drums should move with ease without any obstructions. Step 2. Access Ladder Rock Wall Assembly Place the 020 left access rail beside the 021 right access rail with the grooves facing in. Fit four 022 ladder treads into the grooves on both access rails. Make sure the top edge of the treads are flush to the front of the access rails. Pre-drill holes with a 1 8 drill bit and attach the rails and ladder treads together using four S3 wood screws per tread. Attach swing brackets to the inside top of the access rails at the angled edge using one WB2 wafer bolt with flat washer and T-nut per bracket. The edge of the swing bracket should be flush with the edge of the access rails. Place the 023 gap ladder on each access rail so there is a 2 and 3 8 inch gap between the gap ladder and the top ladder tread. Attach using four S3 wood screws. Place the 024 rock rail on the ground next to the right access rail so it matches the orientation of the two access rails. Attach the 025 top ladder to the top of the access ladder assembly and rock rail using three S3 wood screws. Notice that the holes in the board are towards the top. Attach one swing bracket to the top angled edge of the rock rail, making sure the bracket faces out. Use one WB2 wafer bolt with flat washer and T-nut. Place the 026 board access at the top of the assembly and the 027 access rock bottom at the bottom of the assembly. Then alternate placing four 028 board rock A and four 029 board rock B between the board access and access rock bottom. Do not screw the boards down yet. The rock holes are to be staggered so they do not form a straight line and are at the top of the boards. Also, the rock boards are to be flush to the right access rail and rock rail. Make sure all boards fit together snugly and the assembly is square. Then, attach the board access and access rock bottom using four S20 wood screws per board. Fasten all the other boards with four S20 wood screws per board. Next, place the EN71 handrail one inch from the front edge of the top ladder on the left access rail. Pre-drill holes using a 3 16 inch drill bit, then attach the handrail using two WL3 wafer lags with flat washer. Alternating colors and shapes, attach one rock to each rock board using one PB2 pan bolt with lock washer, flat washer and barrel nut and one S10 pan screw per rock. The pan screw is placed in the hole beneath the pan bolt. 
Make sure all hardware is used to secure each rock properly. Step 3. Door Sidewall Panel Assembly Place two 030 narrow window panels on the ground. Attach the bottom corner panel brackets flush to the grooved edge of each panel with two S8 pan screws per bracket. Measure 51 inches from the bottom of each panel and attach the top corner panel brackets with two S8 pan screws per bracket. The top of the corner panel brackets must sit at 51 inches. Lay the 031 door wall window panel on the ground. Then with a helper, hold one narrow window panel up against the edge of the door wall window panel so the bottom edges are flush. Attach both corner panel brackets to the door wall window panel with two S8 pan screws per bracket. Repeat these steps to attach the second narrow window panel. Make sure both panels are square and flush to each other. Pre-drill with a 3 16th inch drill bit, then fasten the narrow window panels to the door wall window panel with two WL5 wafer lags per narrow window panel. Step 4. Swing Side Wall Panel Assembly Place two 030 narrow window panels on the ground. Attach the bottom corner panel brackets flush to the grooved edge of each panel with two S8 pan screws per bracket. Measure 97 and 3 quarter inches from the bottom of each panel and attach the top corner panel brackets with two S8 pan screws per bracket. The top of the corner panel brackets must sit at 97 and 3 quarter inches. Lay the 040 SW side panel on the ground. Then with a helper, hold one narrow window panel up against the edge of the SW side panel so the bottom edges are flush and the corner panel bracket is flush to the grooved edges of the SW side panel. Attach both corner panel brackets to the SW side panel with two S8 pan screws per bracket. Repeat these steps to attach the second narrow window panel. Pre-drill with a 3 16th inch drill bit, then fasten the narrow window panels to the SW side panel with four WL5 wafer legs per narrow window panel. Install six 5 16th inch T-nuts in both 041 wall ties and both 042 long wall ties. Install four 5 16th inch T-nuts in both 043 joist sides on the long flat side. Starting at the bottom of the swing sidewall panel assembly, loosely attach both O41 wall ties to the narrow window panels, making sure the T-nuts are facing inward with two WB9 wafer bolts with flat washer per board. Noticing the angled edges of 043 joist sides face towards the narrow window panels and the T-nuts are facing inwards, loosely attach both joist sides to the narrow window panels with two WB8 wafer bolts with flat washer per board. Loosely attach both 042 long wall ties to the tops of the narrow window panels with T-nuts facing inwards using two WB9 wafer bolts with flat washer per board. Step 5. Join door wall and swing wall assemblies. With at least two helpers, lift the door wall assembly. With at least two helpers, lift the swing wall assembly so it faces the door wall assembly and slide both assemblies together so the long wall ties are flush to the ends of the narrow window panels of the door wall side. Loosely attach both wall ties and both long wall ties to the narrow window panels with two WB9 wafer bolts with flat washer per board. Loosely attach both joist sides to the narrow window panels with two WB8 wafer bolts with flat washer per board. Step 6. Front Wall Assembly Fit one 0 half panel in between the swing and door wall assemblies on the front side so the open bolt holes are closer to the ground. Loosely fasten the half panel to the wall tie with two WB9 wafer bolts with 5 16th inch flat washer using the previously installed T-nuts. At the top of the assembly, above the half panel, Place the 061 transom panel front between the swing and door wall assemblies so the bolt holes are at the bottom of the panel. Loosely attach to the long wall tie with two WB9 wafer bolts with 5 16th inch flat washer using the previously installed T-nuts. Make sure the assembly is on level ground 
and that the narrow window panels are square and tight to the half panel and transom panel front. Now, tighten all 16 wafer bolts on the front side. On the inside of the assembly, attach the half panel to each narrow window panel using two flat panel brackets with four S8 pan screws per bracket. The bracket should not be raised above the top of the half panel. Step 7. Back Wall Assembly Place one 060 half panel in between the swing and door wall assemblies on the back side so the open bolt holes are closer to the ground. Loosely fasten the half panel to the wall tie with two WB9 wafer bolts with 5 16th inch flat washer using the previously installed T-nuts. At the top of the assembly, above the half panel, place the 070 transom panel back between the swing and door wall assemblies so the bolt holes are at the top of the panel. Loosely attach to the long wall tie with two WB9 wafer bolts with 5 16th inch flat washer using the previously installed T-nuts. Make sure the narrow window panels are square and tight to the half panel and transom panel back, then tighten all 16 wafer bolts on the back side. On the inside of the assembly, attach the half panel to each narrow window panel using two flat panel brackets with four S8 pan screws per bracket. The bracket should not be raised above the top of the half panel. On the inside of the assembly, attach the transom panel back to each narrow window panel using two flat panel brackets with four S8 pan screws per bracket. Step 8. Slide Nest Assembly Place the 080 slide nest joist flat on level ground. Attach one 081 crow's nest post to each side of the joist so the angled edges of the joist are tight to each post using two S20 wood screws per side. Make sure the distance between posts is 25 and 3 quarter inches and do not allow more than a 1 millimeter gap between the slide nest joist and crow's nest post. Attach the 082 slide nest assembly right and 083 slide nest assembly left to each crow's nest post using two S15 wood screws per side. Make sure the staples are towards the bottom of the assembly. Flush to the top of each crow's nest post, attach one 084 slide nest L and R with two S15 wood screws per side. Make sure to maintain the proper orientation as shown in figure 8.7. Make sure the slide nest assembly is square then attach the 085 slide nest top to each crow's nest post with four S15 wood screws. Maintain the 25 and 3 quarter inch distance between posts. The angled edges of the 085 slide nest top should face out and be flush to the outside edges of each slide nest L and R. From inside the assembly, place the 086 short floor joist in the center and flush to the top of the slide nest joist. From outside the assembly, pre-drill with a 1 8 inch drill bit, then attach the slide nest joist to the short floor joist with two S4 wood screws. Step 9. Attach slide nest assembly to fort. With a helper, place the slide nest assembly against the front of the fort so the short floor joist is tight to and flush to the top of the joist side. Pre-drill with a 1 8 inch drill bit, then attach the joist side to the short floor joist with two S4 wood screws. Make sure the slide nest assembly right and slide nest assembly left are tight and flush to the narrow window panels and attach them using two S15 wood screws per board. Attach both slide nest L and R to the narrow window panels using one S15 wood screw per board. From inside the fort, pre-drill with a 1 8 inch drill bit. Then attach each slide nest L and R to the narrow window panels using one 150 degree bracket with four S8 pan screws per side. Step 10, crow's nest assembly. On the door wall side, fit the 100 crow's nest assembly right and the 101 crow's nest assembly left tight to and flush to the tops of each joist side and tight to the narrow window panels. Make sure the angled edge is connecting to the joist and attach each assembly to the joist side with two S15 wood screws per assembly. Attach one 081 crow's nest post to each crow's nest assembly right and crow's nest assembly left with two S15 wood screws per post. 
The bottom of the posts should be flush to the bottoms of the assemblies. Make sure the distance between the crow's nest posts is 25 and 1 half inches. Then attach the 102 crow's nest center to each post with four S15 wood screws. The bottom of the crow's nest center should be flush to the bottom of each post. Note the orientation of the crow's nest posts to the crow's nest center as seen in figure 10.5. Attach one 103 crow's nest RNL to each crow's nest post with two S15 wood screws per post and to the narrow window panels with one S15 wood screw per panel. Each crow's nest RNL should be flush to the inside ends of the panels and flush to the peaked edge of the posts. The distance between crow's nest posts should be maintained at 25 and 1 half inches. Flush to the top of each crow's nest post and tight to the crow's nest RNL, attach the 104 crow's nest top with four S15 wood screws. From inside the fort, pre drill with a 1 8 inch drill bit, then attach each crow's nest RNL to the narrow window panels using one 150 degree bracket with four S8 pan screws per side.